Yes! What is up everyone? It's your favorite part-time YouTuber, but please don't call me that in the comments. You know that I want to be posting every day, but look at this hair and face, okay? I'm popular. I've got a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> anyway, guess what? It's that time of year again. MLS Cup playoff time. So I said to myself, F it. Let's do another preview. But before we get started, I want to give a huge congrats to my former national team teammate and first year coach of LAFC, Steve Trundolo, for his club winning the Supporters' Shield this season, which, for those not in the know, is the trophy given to the team with the best record in the regular season, which, in other leagues around the world, yes, you're right, that would make you the champion. But not here. You have to win three winner go home games on top of your successful season to be the champion. And if you don't like that, then suck it, haters. Those are the rules. Also, I know you're gonna correct me and say that the playoffs started last week, and technically, you would be right. But I consider those first round games as playing games to the real deal, which is now, with only the great eight remaining. Four from the Western Conference and four from the Eastern Conference to figure out who is the very best in the league. So let's get after it by starting in the West first and one of my favorite derbies in the league, El Trafico, between LAFC and the LA Galaxy, who, by the way, have won more MLS Cups than anyone else. But prior to the season, the Galaxy had not qualified for the playoffs for four out of the last five years, which is not a good look for a club with its history. And the one season that the Galaxy did make it, they got to the same spot the quarterfinals, playing against the same opponent, LAFC, but Zlatan was on the team instead of Chicharito, who's their big name now. And the Galaxy lost that one five to three. I was there, I saw it. It was pretty rad, which tied for the most goals ever scored in an MLS Cup playoff game. It's a fun fact for you. But can Chicharito be the difference this time around, even though this version of LASC boasts some pretty big names too, like Gareth Bale and Giorgio Chiellini, along with Carlos Vela? It's hard to say. The Galaxy won two of their three matchups this season, once in the league and once in the US Open Cup, but LAFC did get a 3-2 win over them at home in July. And with this game being at the Bank of California Stadium where LAFC play, which over the course of this always entertaining derby, LAFC have only lost once to the Galaxy in seven total games. I just don't see the Galaxy pulling off a win, despite the fact that they had a very professional 1-0 win over a very tough Nashville team in the first round. And even though history hasn't been kind to the Supporter Shield winners in the history of the league, it's only seven of the previous 26 have gone on to win MLS Cup. I just feel like LAFC have the goods and maybe just a little bit too much. I think it'll be a goal fest once again, like it was back in July. I'll say 3-2 LAFC again, okay? All right, I put my flag in the ground, and that's what I'm going with. And now from one derby in California to one in Texas, it's the league's biggest turnaround story from the previous season, Austin FC, who were 25 points better this season than last. That's pretty impressive. And they're gonna host one of their local rivals, FC Dallas, who needed penalty kicks to beat Minnesota United in the first round at home. But let's give everyone some context here. After beating the best team in the league, LAFC 4-1 at home in late August, Austin only won one of their last seven. Then in their first round playoff game at home against Real Salt Lake, they were down 2-0 after 15 minutes, so things were looking bleak. Then led by their MVP candidate, Sebastian Driussi, and a red card in their favor, they turned things around and like Dallas, they won on penalties. So it's hard to know which version of each of these teams is gonna show up. Both came from behind in their first round games to send it into extra time, and then obviously they won in pens, which shows their resiliency and their character. Both have game-changing players and confident goalkeepers, which is very important this time of year. And both times they played this season, they ended in draws, 1-1 and 2-2. But what's interesting is that in both games, Dallas had a 1-0 and 2-0 lead, and Austin came storming back to even things out. So I wonder what happens this time around when there has to be a winner. My guess is that they'll probably finish in a draw, and they're gonna go to penalties. And because Austin is at home with that awesome atmosphere, I'm gonna go with Los Verdes. And now in the East, we have top seed the Philadelphia Union, who have scored more goals than anyone else this season and gave up the least amount as well, which is incredibly impressive. Taking on FC Cincinnati, who are the rare team that Philly didn't beat this season. The first time was 1-1 in Philly, and they lost 3-1, which is only one of five losses that Philly had all season when they traveled to Cincinnati two months ago. So man, maybe Cincinnati's their bogey team which frankly wouldn't be a surprise since Cincinnati's head coach, another one of my former national team teammates, Pat Noonan, used to be an assistant for Philly for four seasons, as was Cincinnati's general manager, Chris Albright, who also 
was another one of my former national team teammates who was with Philly's front office for eight years. So these dudes know what makes Philly tick. And after winning their first ever MLS Cup playoff game in New York over the Red Bulls last weekend, Cincinnati are gonna have some of that nothing to lose momentum. However, this union team is sick. Head coach Jim Curtin, and uh, shout out to another awesome JC out there, has this team playing as well as any team I've ever seen play in MLS. They've got one of the best goalkeepers in the league. They have a lights out defense led by two Defender of the Year candidates, and there's only three that are up for the award. They have a solid, hardworking, take no midfield, which you have to have if you want to have success at any level, and a front three that scores goals for fun. Also, the fact that their influential string puller and goal scorer, Daniel Gazdag, who has 22 goals and six assists this season, isn't up for the league MVP award is absolutely criminal. Anyway, I like Cincinnati. I think they're a fun team to watch and their future is incredibly bright. But given what Philly have done this season and how fun they are to watch, I'm pulling for them to win this and to win the whole thing. So hopefully I didn't just jinx them. I think I just did. I'm so sorry. And finally, it's the reigning MLS Cup champions, NYCFC, who looked absolutely fantastic in their first round playoff 3-0 ass slapping of Inter Miami, where they scored some world-class goals along the way. Excellent, excellent goals. And they're headed to Canada to take on a Montreal team that has quietly been one of the best teams in the league all season. And they proved it once again by knocking off the US Open Cup winners, Orlando City 2-0. So both teams are coming into this on the back of great wins, so it could come down to experience. Last season, NYCFC had to travel to Boston to take on the best team of last season, the New England Revolution, and beat them in penalties. Then they went to Philly to take on a COVID-depleted Union team to book their ticket to the MLS Cup Final, which they did by coming from behind to win 2-1, to one, before heading to Portland and beating the Timbers in front of a raucous crowd to win in penalties to become champions. So. This core group of players for NYCFC have done it before away from home. However, and yes, I know this is Montreal's first time making the playoffs in six seasons, so that whole experience thing that I was talking about maybe doesn't play in for these guys. But I think this Montreal team is something special. Led by second year head coach Wilfried Nancy, their commitment to the cause and to each other is something that I think NYCFC is gonna have difficulty overcoming, especially away from home. Also, Montreal have only lost once since July 17th, which included a 0-0 draw against NYCFC at home during that time, but pay that no matter. I'm riding this Montreal wave with my old teammate Kai Kamara, and if he's a former teammate of mine that is still playing, he is literally old, scoring the game winner. So go on, Kai. So there you have it. Those are my predictions for this round of the MLS Cup playoffs with LAFC and Austin winning in the West and Philly and Montreal winning in the East, which will make for an awesome, awesome Final Four. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments after you hit like and subscribe, of course. And I cannot wait to see you next week when I can rub it in your faces after I get all these predictions right. Later!